just a funny story. I just wanted to share, just because it shows um, the true character of James Goofus. When that resolution was attained, my husband was speaking with Lori on the phone. She said, hold on, because Mr. Scoopus wants to talk to you for a minute. And he picked up the phone and he said, so we have a resolution. And my husband said, well, it's temporary, but that's good for now. He said, that is absolutely unacceptable. I will not take it. This is my constituent. They deserve to have a resolution. They have a child that's in desperate need. I need to go back to my constituent with a better answer than temporary. My husband said, I am the constituent. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, Mr. Mealy. I am so sorry. I thought I was speaking with the insurance agency. <laughs> so, so, the two, two words I could use to sum up James Scoopus and our experience with him. Number one, I would have to say accessibility. I, I would never have thought in a million years you could get to a politician who would be so down to earth as to see you immediately and have time for you like he has nothing else going on. And number two, being very, very genuine and, and caring to get the results for you that he feels you deserve. So I'm more than happy to speak on his behalf. I've been shouted from the rooftops. I've told everyone ever, you know, with all the other moms I have in my group with other children, I said, you just have to play your assemblyman. What do you mean? What do you do? But I guess it's not the same everywhere. He is a unique individual, and I'm very, very lucky to have found him and Lori. Thank you for allowing me to speak. This truly is an exciting afternoon, an exciting moment in the political history of the Hudson Valley. Orange, Ulster, and Rockland, the 10 towns in the 39th Senate District, the many cities and villages, the dozen or so school districts, from Havistraw to Marlboro, from Newburgh to Crawford, you're going to have a great new state senator. It's my great privilege to bring forward of the person who we are truly all here for, the next state senator from this district, the Honorable James Scopitz. This is, uh, this is really overwhelming for me, and I'm, I'm used to events and, and speaking in front of people, but this is, uh, this is a first, um, this type of overwhelming, outpouring support. Um, you know, I, before I get into my remarks, I, need to, I want to say a few things. First and foremost, um, I need to thank my wife, Hillary. Uh, <laughs> Well, first of all, none of you would be here. This would not be allowed to happen without her and her blessing. Uh, she has been supportive every step of the way. Uh, it was actually our first year anniversary just yesterday. Uh, so, so I'm thrilled to have the, the strongest supporter and partner by my side over these next few months uh, between now and November and certainly beyond in my wife, Hillary. Thank you. I need to thank Heather. I don't know where she went, um, but uh, it's it's easy or, or somewhat easy uh, for us elected officials to be speaking at events like this. It is not often easy for um, someone who's not in elective office, not in the public light, to speak in front of a crowd like this and to really share her personal story. Um, I want to thank Heather. Uh, she captures why I do this. Um, there are many stories like hers. Hers is compelling. Hers is powerful, um, and it's really a shame that she has to share a story like that in many ways. No one should have to reach out to their state legislator to be treated with dignity and respect by those who operate here in New York State. You shouldn't have to do that. But the matter of fact is that um, I relish taking on the insurance industry. I, I don't mind it at all. Um, and, and her story represents that. I, in fact, when we learned about uh, her story, and she came into that meeting. I don't even know if I've shared this with her. I, we got on the phone, I got on the phone with uh, Fidelis' executives and, um, and basically laid it out. Hey, look, you know, what you're doing here is despicable. We have a few paths forward here. 
you can continue to fight, and then we'll go through appeals, and we'll go through the regulatory process. And by the way, we'll have a press conference outside of your local yeah. Hudson Valley office yeah. Yeah. to share with your other customers about what you're doing, um, or you know, we could do the right thing here. And I'm thrilled that we were able to resolve um, Heather and her family situation, but there are too many people uh, who have similar stories like hers who are not getting resolved. Those are the people we have to fight for as we run for office all around the state and certainly here in our area. I want to thank um, everyone who, who said those wonderful things about me. Uh, it's been a privilege and an honor to serve with Congressman Maloney. Um, in many ways, he is a model congressman for our country. Forget about our state, forget about our region, for our country. There are, especially as we look to Washington, um, there are far too many people who serve in that city who just seemingly serve to throw bombs at one another. They don't care about getting things done. They don't care about the constituent work. Congressman Maloney is a bright spot in an otherwise very dark town in Washington. We are thankful to have him represent us here. Mike Janaris, who I truly look forward to serving with in the Senate, um, he wasn't lying. He's been trying to, to get this day to happen for a very long time. Um, and I'm thrilled that he's here and being a part of this program to get us kicked off and look forward to working with him in the coming months to make this a reality and successful in November. And Tom DiNapoli, a true friend, um, I'm thrilled that uh, he can be here and, uh, and introduce me. Um, he has a big job. I mean, he runs the, the pension fund, and he represents the entire state of New York. And yet, how many times is he here in the Hudson Valley and here in Orange County making sure that we count? And, and of course, to everyone here, far more people than I expected to show up in the middle of a work day, quite frankly. Um, I'm, I'm humbled and I'm honored. I, I don't even know if the bar is open, but maybe the prospect of a bar brought many of you here in the middle of a Monday. Um, but this can't happen, and, and certainly this can't be successful without all of your help and all of your support today and moving forward in the coming months. So, so before I get to the reason why we're all here and, and talking about it for a bit, um, I do want to take a moment and echo a little bit of what Congressman Maloney has said and some others uh, in acknowledging uh, Senator Larkin's public service to our region. Even when we've disagreed on political issues, and that has happened frequently, uh, my respect and many of our respect for him and his dedication has always been paramount. And he certainly deserves our gratitude as he finishes his term that runs through the end of December. So our part of the state here in the Hudson Valley is at a crossroads. In the assembly, I fought and fought and fought these past six years to level an out-of-whack playing field. Long neglected, Eastern Orange County and North Rockland, I believe, finally saw the assembly respond to our needs after a long time of not. Yeah. Over these six years, we brought home the most education funding to our local schools ever while championing and delivering on universal full-day kindergarten, which should have happened a long time ago. Over these six years, we've brought home the most infrastructure funding our assembly district has ever seen from Albany. The Palisades Parkway, Exit 131, Route 6, Route 9W, Old Route 17, Route 32, Route 207, and there are more. We need more, and the Senate District will see more. Over these six years, we've had an assemblyman who stood up to Wall Street giveaways, big pharma, big insurance, big oil, and any special interests that's tried to take advantage of our system. I've treated every single individual and every single community equally. No preferential treatment for anyone, period. And over, this six, over these six years, we've successfully fought for the lowest middle class state income tax rates in 70 years. Because I know Hudson Valley families need tax relief and need a lot more of it. Next. 
Now, however, as our state senate district seeks a new representative for the first time in 28 years, people will choose whether to double down on creating a fair, just state government that continues to close that equity gap for the Hudson Valley or erase the progress we've made in the Hudson Valley and return to being a punching bag and ATM for Albany. We can't afford to turn back. We have to look forward, maintain our hard fought wins, and finally and fully level the playing field for us and our neighbors. That's why I'm proud to announce I'm running to be your next state. Yeah. This, this race will provide a sharp contrast for voters, like Senator Gennaris mentioned. I'll put up our record of success against anyone's. That record of integrity and commitment will go up against anyone who comes out of the primary on the other side. I will say this, though. The Republicans themselves have an important choice to make in their primary. They will choose, I will say, between a decent, honorable man who serves in the Orange County Legislature and a Rockland County man who has made his living as a political operative for the most extreme, destructive wing of his party. For, for the sake of our democracy and for the sake of providing voters with two respectable candidates in November, I hope Republican primary voters make the right choice. Our record is clear. I've stood up to the highest powers within my own party time after time. And all of you know that. And yet, I've also worked across the aisle to deliver results because it's the right thing to do and because it's the effective thing to do. It's why we've been able to win tough elections in an assembly district where Donald Trump won by double digits in 2016. The people in our community know that whether you're a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent, I respect you, I listen to you, and I work for you. It's only by working together like that, putting our communities first ahead of politics, will we be able to make New York fair again. Special interest groups continue to run roughshod over so many good families, just like the Mealy's insurance company tried to do to them. These groups have an army of lobbyists that treat human beings like numbers in a spreadsheet and put cold, hard profits above the well-being of our people. With me as your senator, let me be crystal clear. Not on my watch. <laughs> Albany, and specifically the state senate, has despicably bottled up the Child Victims Act, legislation that seeks to provide long sought after justice for children who were sexually abused while growing up. As your senator, I'll demand the bill's passage so that sexual predators are made to pay for their heinous crimes and child victims are provided the justice they deserve. <laughs> People are sick and tired of reading headline after headline about corrupt politicians being taken out of our capital in handcuffs. I'm sick and tired of it too. The state senate has refused to even hold simple up or down votes on common sense reforms like closing the outrageous LLC loophole which we have seen employed here locally time after time and banning outside income for state legislators. Yes. As your state senator, I'll fight tooth and nail to restore some semblance of faith back in state government by pushing for these reforms as well as kicking the state's pay-to-play economic development schemes to the curb. Yeah. 
let's support small businesses like the one we're in here today and put an end to the corrupt corporate welfare that permeates our state. Oh, yes. <laughs> Education runs through my blood. My 11th great-grandfather built our nation's first public school in Dedham, Massachusetts in 1644. That's true. Today, I find it disgraceful that funding meant for our Hudson Valley public schools continues to be siphoned off and funneled to New York City charters by the state senate. It's no coincidence that these same charters spend millions and millions to elect and re-elect their buddies in the state legislature. As your senator, I'll call for an end to the sweetheart political deals that see the Hudson Valley's hard-earned money fly into New York City's coffers. <laughs> Organized labor has never been under attack as it is today. To my tremendous friends in organized labor who are here and who have strongly supported me during my time in the assembly, you're among the last bulwarks protecting the shrinking middle class. I'll always have your back in the fight for good paying jobs with safe working conditions because every worker of every stripe deserves to be treated with dignity, including professions like our teachers, first responders, and so many others who oftentimes are not respected by our government officials. As your senator, I'll continue to be your champion because you deserve nothing less. The city of Newburgh has long been treated as an outcast by New York. As your senator, I'll work day and night to build on the recent successes in Newburgh and provide the attention, the funding, and the leadership necessary to turn it, as well as other struggling communities in our region, around. Let's repave the roads, let's give them clean water, let's prioritize the police and fire services, let's give them money for their land bank, and let's heal the political and racial divides so that Newburgh can thrive once more. The choice could not be clearer, ladies and gentlemen. For far too long, the system was rigged against the Hudson Valley. But now we've got a fighting chance. We can't afford to turn back the clock. In our race, as was mentioned, there will literally be millions of dollars in dark, seedy money spent by our opponents who will attempt to lie, cheat, and steal their way to victory in November. Hell, they've been throwing bombs at me since late 2015 with anonymous attacks in anticipation of this very day. But we have something they don't. A message that speaks truth to power. And an army that will carry that message to every voter in this district. Yeah. Voters want to know who's going to stand up for us against the forces in Albany and New York City who intend us harm. Voters want to know who's going to have their back every time all the time. Voters want to know who's going to level the playing field for the Hudson Valley and fight for full, unequivocal fairness in our state. My friends, we're going to win this race because we're going door to door, neighborhood to neighborhood, town to town to speak to every single voter. Right. And I don't care whether you're a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent, they will hear from us, we will hear from them, and I'll be proud to represent them in the State Senate. Thank you, everyone.